Welcome back to California Cooking. You know, so many new restaurants have popped up in the last year or so, and I'm taking you to one of them in West LA, and it specializes in wood fire dishes inspired by all of the different neighborhoods that make up our great city. Then I'm making two comfort food recipes, chicken and dumplings, and a creamy polenta with shiitake mushrooms. Jonah's Kitchen in Santa Monica has a super cool vibe, but with a neighborhood feel. And the first thing you notice when you walk in is the amazing smell of the wood-fired grill. Chef Jonah Johnson has worked for years as a personal chef for big name celebrities. He's taken his experiences from his childhood and traveling around the world with A-listers and created Jonah's Kitchen. Let's go inside. Hi, Chef Jonah, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good. What a beautiful, like, hidden garden back here. This is gorgeous. Thank you. I mean, when you read about Jonah's, it's it really is meant to take you somewhere, right? Like, a, like an escape. Have you ever seen pictures of a cenote that almost looks like it's underground, and you look up, and there's greenery hanging down, right. and it's a it's was that the vision? That. Well, afterwards, it came out that way. It wasn't okay. really the vision, but yeah. then I realized it sort of looks like a. Cenote cave. First thing I noticed was the scent. You smell the wood fire. You see the candles burning. It has this very like draws you in. And I was saying to you, I said, there's nothing worse than when you walk into a restaurant and it doesn't smell like. You can't food. smell anything. It's about all the senses, and I've always liked those places that you can smell before you get anywhere near it. Mm -hmm. You know. But I heard that for you, travel really influenced this restaurant. For sure, it did. I've been all around the world, but th this is really about LA because, mm. you know, L LA is super um, multicultural. Yeah. And so all those places that I've been, those people are also here. Mm -hmm. So I sort of wanted to make this uh, like a melting pot of the different, you know, cultures that make up mm -hmm. Southern California. Yeah. And I just sort of went where I liked to right. eat food and it was usually you know, different areas of the city uh, where if I wanted, you know, something in particular, if I wanted Korean food, I'm going yeah. to Koreatown. You know, if I want, you know, Latin food or barbecue or Indian food, I like to travel around and there's so many pockets of mm -hmm. uh, Los Angeles mm -hmm. to do that. But then you have places like this where, because we've grown up around so many, you know, different people yeah. and we love those flavors, we say, well, let's, this is what we do at my house growing up, aesthetically, we play loud music. Okay. A variation, a variety of music. And it's meant to sort of come here and have a good time mm -hmm. and a good feeling. Mm -hmm. I wanted to sort of bring my home to a place that I could share with everyone. Mm -hmm. I grew up here, but I was born in Minnesota. So, oh, really? Well, yeah. Okay. But my one side was from the South, yes. but still in Minnesota. So we had a lot of soul food oh, growing up. We had some African food from, you know, like exchange uh, students and uh, barbecue and just good old fashioned soul food. And the other side is uh, Swedish and Serbian. We're doing a little digging on mm -hmm. you and you uh, were a chef for celebrities, mm -hmm. which everybody in Los Angeles, I think, looks at that as like the foray into getting into the culinary world in Los Angeles. If you cook for, not dropping names for you, but Brad Pitt or Leonardo well, I don't DiCaprio drop names or... unless nobody's watching. <laughs> but how do you get into that line of work? And is that as cool as because it sounds? I, I got into that through, really through friends. Yeah. Because, you know, I love you know, cooking and then you, you meet different people. Right. And then next thing you know, that avenue opens up. Yeah. And that's fun. And that brings you around the world. Right. And, you know, at some point you go, all right, enough of that. This is my house, right? Yes. It's about True. us. Mm -hmm. And do you get to travel the world when you are a professional chef for someone? When you work Absolutely. for them, they take you well, with you them? you have to. Well, because they go and if make movies. If you work movies. in the movie, then you know, you yeah. know where the location is. Oh, that's pretty cool. And that's what's really brought me all around yeah. the uh, world, is working in the uh, movie industry. Right. I could imagine, though, when they meet you, they're like, you know what, this guy seems fun. I'd like him to cook for me. Is that kind of how it happens? That's exactly how it happens. <laughs> What are we making? So we're making one of our shrimp tacos here. What nice. we start with is our is our house made. Hello, 
there she is. She's making Going the tor tortillas. She's looking to see yeah. if she approves of what you did here with her and tortilla. And we make these uh, tortillas with our own um, house uh, rendered manteca, wow. which is the, from the smoked cochinita pibil. Yeah, there's now, your cute shrimp. Yeah, these are cute. <laughs> These are Argentine red shrimp. What we do is we, we put, just use a little bit of oil there, a little salt, salt on the shrimp, yep. a little pepper. Okay. That's fast in the wok. That's like, that happens right? fast. Yeah. yeah. It only takes about a good minute to cook those, huh? And then I put a little bit of scallion on there. Nice. Huh? Just a little touch of olive oil. Huh? So now we take our gochujang, we put a little bit yeah. of that on the shrimp just to glaze it. Now that reminds you of the Korean restaurants that you like. Exactly, those yeah. are very much Korean flavors. Okay. This dish has a lot of Korean flavors in it. And then we like to render that down just so it becomes nice and tacky and yes. slightly burnt. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now we have our homemade corn tortilla shell. And if you see how that almost blackens on uh, there a bit. Yeah, those little nice crispy bits, yes. Oh yeah, we okay. finish that with what we start with is a little bit of wasabi mayo. We have some shredded cabbage. And then this is our Diablo sauce, which is made with red jalapenos, which mm. are called Fresnos. And a little bit of cilantro. And then that's our shrimp taco. Would you like to make one? I would love to make a shrimp taco, let's chef. Let's do it. Okay, I'll get your tortilla it. warmed up. Do you yes. remember what to do? I remember, okay, salt and pepper on my shrimp. Yeah. Okay, salt, pepper, little, little swirl of, of the oil. oil. That's good. Shrimp goes in. You just kind of let it do its thing for a sec. You did do some of this action. You can do that too. Okay. Just be careful that you don't don't, don't spill any oil on yourself. Right. You get a little wrist action like this. Yeah. Okay. Flip it. Okay. Yep. Well, try to be careful okay. though. I'm afraid I'm going right. to lose this shrimp. <laughs> Put a little bit of the green onion in there. And then this was Stop. the- Stop, yeah. And then you That's let it get sticky. Exactly. You're almost there on the tortilla. Perfect. Yep. We go with a touch of the wasabi mayo. There was some the cabbage. cabbage. There was cilantro, oh, a little touch more of green, green onion. onion and cilantro. Yep. And, and then a little bit of that spicy diablo. Amazing. Do I get a job? Am I hired? You are. Yes. You I like the walk. Tonight. Yeah, tonight. We open for business. Cheers. Cheers. Oh my gosh. Not bad. That's good. I think you outdid yourself. <laughs> it's like one of everything, Welcome. Jonah. I might have tasted dessert first. 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 It's swimming in a pool of fudge. That's our We're... chocolate cobbler. So even though this is, it's not just melted chocolate. It's not. It's, it isn't. It's decadent, but what is there's it? other things in there. There there's are. Some, oh yeah, there's some milk and cream and a little espresso in that chocolate sauce. So it's not like a ganache. Just the melted melted chocolate. Oh my yeah. goodness! Take me around the table. Well, these Tell are me what our, you got our crispy potatoes. It's mm. sort of our version of a French fry, Idaho potato that we bake. Yeah. And then we just break it into odd little shapes like this. And then we fry it. That's the K-Town chicken. Ah, nice and kimchi. Like the Korean barbecue chicken. Yes. That is a half of a chicken. Okay. Cut up. We smoke that chicken and then okay. we finish it with that gochujang um, sauce and we put it there on that Santa Maria oh, grill. Right. And then we serve it with a little bit of kimchi and our house-made pickles. It's like candy. Look at this uh, steak over here. What's happening here? That's a picanha steak. Okay. Prime top sirloin. Lean, but it's nice and tender. And is that cooked on the open fire? It is, yeah. Oh, gosh. Gorgeous fish here. And that's a butterfly branzino. Jonah, you I'm need... Sorry if it's sad. You should join me. Join me. I'm, I'm eating alone. I am going to join you okay. with, uh, with this cocktail. Cheers. <laughs> Salud. This place is incredible. Thank and you. And you're a lovely, welcoming host. Too. Thank you, you for can coming. You I can... think that you're uh, what? <laughs> a lovely, welcoming host, too. I love chatting with Jonah. Nicest guy, such a generous host, and every single one of those dishes, delicious. Coming up, I'm cooking up creamy polenta with shiitake mushrooms, then giving you an update on our home reno. There's a whole lot to report on, but first, this right here, a one pot meal. It is so comforting this time of year. I'm making chicken and dumplings. Here's a classic comfort dish that's warm, cozy, and comes together in one pot. I'm making chicken and dumplings for the first time. Let's see how it turned out. Bye. 
I um, always love the help of a rotisserie chicken from the store. And I'm gonna try um, kind of a chicken and dumplings, one pot meal sort of thing. Um, I remember having chicken and dumplings. We used to go to a restaurant when I was a kid. Um, and I loved it. I remember always ordering the chicken and dumplings. So I'm gonna try my hand at it today with some basic things that you start any soup or stock with, carrot, celery, and onion. I would say three normal sized carrots into bite size, you know, pieces. You don't want things too big. And then some celery, maybe four stocks or so. There we go. Okay, so my onion already chopped. This was a half of a large onion. So I've got some butter in my pot. I put the onions in and then celery and carrots. And you just want to get them softened. Hit it with some salt, some pepper, clove of garlic, and also some fresh thyme. Also to that, a bay leaf. So just let that go for a few minutes. Now, to kind of make a roux, basically to thicken up this chicken and dumpling. So I have a third of a cup of flour. And already in here is a good amount of butter. I think I put a half a stick, just shy of a half a stick of butter. So what you want to do with the flour, you want to cook out that raw flour taste. Almost to where it's like a blonde color, I think. So to uh, the roux and the veggies, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of Chardonnay is what I happen to have. And that's what we're just building flavor, building flavor, our chicken stock. Right now I'm only gonna do half and just reserve some and see how we're doing. So give it a stir and you wanna get it boiling because you want all of that flour to kind of thicken up this stew soup. I'm gonna give it, with every step, you wanna give some salt and pepper. So let that bubble up and see how thick we are. Dumpling time. For our chicken and dumplings, really quick kind of a dumpling batter, starting with some flour. We have two tablespoons of melted butter, three quarters of a cup of milk, I'm using whole milk, two teaspoons of baking powder, salt, garlic powder, teaspoon. I have parsley, dill, and chives. And now we just combine everything and that's it. Now you've made dumpling batter. I really am happy with the texture of the chicken and dumpling. So it's soupy, but it's, there's a creaminess there. So you could right now take a little bit of this hot liquid, mix it with some flour, put it back in, thicken it. Uh, if it was too thick, add some more chicken stock, but I kind of like where we're at. A little splash of half and half heavy cream, and then my rotisserie chicken that I just shredded the meat. I'm gonna put that in. Some frozen peas, frozen, just put them right in. So right now it looks like kind of a creamy chicken soup to the dumpling. So I've got it on a gentle temperature, like a low, medium, low. You take the dough, have a teaspoon, and you just do this. It's rustic and I, I'm all about rustic. And you just drop in as many as you like. I might stop here. Pop the lid on, 15 minutes, and don't peek. chicken and dumplings are done. I didn't peek. Look at that, they look good. And look, the sauce is creamy and velvety. You got your veggies, your chicken. And the house, I'm telling you guys, it smells so good in here. Let it cool before you burn your mouth, but I can't wait. It's yummy. That was super easy and it's heartier than a chicken soup and absolutely delicious. I hope you give it a try. Coming up, I'm making creamy polenta with the shiitake mushroom sauce. Then 
Baby number two, gonna be here before we know it. So our home reno has kicked into high gear. I'll give you an update coming up next. I'm always trying to find different ways to cut back on meat. And one way I do that is by cooking with mushrooms, but not just any old white button mushrooms, meaty shiitakes. Here's my creamy polenta with shiitake mushrooms. I was thinking of something quick to put together for dinner and I've been in a you know what I heard the other day, which actually sounds kind of like the way I've been eating, a veggie forward <laughs> dish, which means it's just more vegetables than it is anything else. So for today, I thought, I love polenta or grits, but then I thought, well, what can we use as a topping, like a sauce or something? But I happen to love mushrooms because they're the greatest substitute if you aren't gonna have meat in your meal. So I have some shiitake mushrooms, gonna slice those up with some leeks, make a little sauce to pour on our polenta. So we'll see, I've never made, this is a new one. So we'll see um, how we do. And I did shiitakes because to me, shiitakes are meatier and they just have a little more something than maybe your button mushroom. And what I did, um, by the way, don't wet your mushrooms, never put them under running water because they just become soggy sponges. So you wipe them with a little paper towel. If there's any dirt, these came really clean. And then I took the stems. The stems on shiitakes are a little tough. So I got rid of those. This is two containers actually of shiitakes. And I'm gonna just cut them into big slices. Leeks. The only thing with leeks though, when you clean them, cut them open and you take the tops off because they're very, again, they're very woody and tough. But inside all of these folds can be dirt. So you really wanna wash and dry them good and just cut these up. Got some butter, a fat tablespoon of butter and a little bit of olive oil because you don't want the butter to burn. So I'm gonna add in our leeks. Get those going first. Some salt and pepper. These are gonna take a couple of minutes to soften and get nice and browned, a little bit caramelized. While we do that, let's go ahead and get started on our corn grits, also known as polenta. I am going to do my grits a little differently. I'm gonna use chicken stock. I know this is a vegetarian dish, but you can use chicken stock, veggie stock, water, milk. Totally up to you, three cups. And I'm just cooking it according to package. And then bring it to a boil and you add a cup of grits. So our leeks are getting nice and soft. In go our shiitake mushrooms. This is when you might need a little more butter or oil because mushrooms definitely soak up anything that's in the pan. You don't want to salt mushrooms right away. I've always heard that if you salt mushrooms in the beginning, it pulls the water out and then it makes it watery. So you add salt once they're cooked. Mushrooms getting nice and browned. So to that, two cloves of garlic, grate it in, stir that around, and then some thyme. Happen to have some fresh thyme, so a little bit of that. Pour in a little stock, the mascarpone cheese, and that's gonna create a creamy sauce. Touch of salt. Okay, so our chicken stock is boiling. To that, I've got one cup of grits, got my whisk, just to keep it from lumping and that'll be ready in five minutes. And dinner, dinner will be ready. So to our grits, just to add a little extra something. So some of the mascarpone, like we put in the sauce, I'm gonna put it in the grits. Some butter into our grits, and then you're gonna stir that around. And look at that beautiful creaminess. That looks so good. How I would plate this is I would add some of these creamy grits to a bowl to our grits, our mushrooms, shiitake, leeks, garlic, thyme, some lovely Parmesan cheese, and that's it. Mm. Oh my goodness, that just hits the spot. 
That dish is so full of flavor and warms the belly. Okay, guys, speaking of belly, our home reno has started off slow, but with baby number two on the way, we needed to really kick things up a notch. Here's where we're at. This is normally where I'd be standing when I'm shooting the show, and now there's nothing here. We knocked out the whole kitchen, um, and we're gonna start. We're gonna start from scratch. I have a, a nice um, <laughs> open floor plan, no wall. That just happened today. It's crazy how when every day you show up, you're like, wow, there was a wall there yesterday. But a window is gonna go in there, um, and so basically, what we're gonna try to do is, you guys have already seen kind of this back area that we somewhat finished. It's kind of a big pant walk-in pantry. So now it's gonna connect to the rest of the kitchen, which will be nice. So stove's going here. We're knocking some of this wall down. And then we're gonna make a, an island here in the middle. So it'll be very open concept. And now I'm trying to pick out, let's see what I'm picking out, paint colors for the cabinets in there. The cabinets out here, I'm gonna do wood stain. We were just talking to the guy about backsplash. So many decisions, so many. But I'm excited. It's always exciting when you see some progress being made. We're so grateful that we have a place to stay at my in-laws, but we cannot wait to get back into our own home. I'll keep you updated on all the progress, but that does it for us. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. We're about the same, I'm 45, so we're, well, I are? started quite late, as you can see. That's Number amazing. two, but yeah, 40, 45. I thought you were a college cheerleader. Oh, you're funny, yeah. <laughs> He's charming. See, that's, <laughs> that's something I've noticed about Jonah. He's charming. I almost spilled my drink on it. <laughs>